All right, welcome to the first episode of Maya with Matthew. This very well might be the first and only, but we'll see. Hopefully we might be able to turn this into some sort of anthology. As what we're looking for at this point in Maya, we're going to be looking at Boolean work, which will allow us to create several objects and intersect them with each other and allow us to create some pretty unique shapes. And but first, what we're going to be doing is looking at taking in some curves from Illustrator to also extrude along some paths in Maya. I've been talking a lot recently about how useful Illustrator can be used in Maya to be able to create some unique shapes. And so first off, we'll take a look at something I already have set up here in Illustrator. This itself is a Gothic Rose window tracery. That's a project that I've already worked on before and is already in one of my models. And I figured it'd be a great place to just show you what I did here. I have some lines already created, but we'll do a quick example of what we were doing here. All right, so as you can see, there is a lot of detail in this particular model here. And I have several lines created just simply outlining the entirety of this path. Now, I was only needing to actually do one section of this particular piece. As you can see, it's fairly repeating. It's the exact same thing over and over again. So in Maya, I can just create this one particular object and use the program to repeat it all around this circle, thus creating our model. Uh, so in Illustrator here, I just imported this particular picture and we can take our pen tool and simply zoom in a little bit here. And we're just simply clicking along these curves in Illustrator, it works in curves and allows us to really get fairly mathematically accurate representation of these curves. Now, Illustrator is fairly straightforward to use of the Adobe products. I've worked with a few of them and Illustrator has been shockingly useful in 3D modeling. So we're gonna switch around the fill here. So we just got that line. As you can see, uh, we do have some things that we can do to actually fix this. It's one of the great things about Illustrator is it allows you to move things around and there's no sense of permanency to it. All right, and that's just simply what I did here up here spending a lot more time on it to actually get the curves correct. Now, as you can see, each one of these are individual lines. To extrude this properly in the Maya program, they actually have to be on a, a broken path. It can't be a, a complete round object. Uh, that's why every one of these things here, there's a distinct stop and end point. So uh, just through the process of exporting this into Maya, and export. So we're going to first delete our example curve here. And we don't want to bring in this image plane into Maya. So we are going to simply delete that. I'm not going to save this file. We can simply trash that layer. And this is exactly what we're going to end up bringing into Maya. Now, these are some profiles that I created that this is what we're going to actually be extruding along that curve. So this is going to bring the depth to what you're actually seeing here. So this is just going to show us where these particular objects will need to be expanded. So we will export this entire project. Actually, I'm sorry, we're just going to save it to our desktop. Uh, 
example, Trace. Now, Maya does talk and is able to read Illustrator files, but only one of the older formats. So even though we have the 2020 here, we have to kick back all the way to the old Illustrator 8 file to allow Maya to actually be able to read it. So we're saving that to our desktop. Ignore those warnings here. And now we can just jump up on over to Maya here. And we are going to import that file that is exactly an Illustrator file. Import that here. And lo and behold, coming into Maya, we have those exact curves that I had just created in Illustrator. Pretty awesome. Now, as for turning it into an actual 3D object, Maya does have a lot of functions that are going to actually allow us to do that pretty easily here. So I'm just at this point making it parallel with the surface here. And now we're going to take those other objects that you had seen that I had created. And we're actually going to turn these simple lines into actual shapes. As you see here, now we actually have a 3D object that was something that I had drawn in Illustrator. Now there's a lot that actually generally needs to happen to make these a viable 3D image because as you can see here the lines are fairly jagged. So with this particular program as soon as I can find it It's not entirely important right now. Should be able to do this from the bevel plus. There we go. All right, so now as you can see here, I'm just increasing the amount of, uh, they're actually called polygons that are gonna allow us to be able to see that curve a lot better. So as you can see here, that's a pretty smooth curve. I can even kick it up to make it merely an actual circle. Now, for this particular object, is only working in straight lines, but just smaller, smaller straight lines to give a better version of that curve. So now we're going to take this actual object here, and we are going to move it over. To the rest of the lines that we're making on our tracery. Uh, so actually we're going to do that same process here with this one. As this is the one that's going to be used for the more detailed parts. All right, so it's just simple as lining up the object with the curve. We'll do it at the end of the curve, which for this one is down here, as you can see. Now, what I'm actually only needing is just going to be the face here. Get the address. All right, and it's just about getting the best way to get it centered here. I'm not going to spend too much time on that because it's pretty intuitive. 
that's fairly centered. So we're just going to take the base here and extrude it along that path. So we're going to grab the face here, and then we're going to grab the path so it knows where to actually extrude that face along. Hit the extrude command. Looks pretty funny. But once we actually give it the amount of divisions necessary to get there, you can see it starts slowly taking its shape. Now, it only automatically allows me to go to 25, but I can type this in here. We're going to need a lot of divisions to make this look accurate. Let's just throw it up straight to 200. All right, and now as for thickness, we're not actually going to need any thickness here. And for whatever reason, this did not extrude the, quite the way I expected. Let's try 100. That's a little bit closer to what I was talking about. So now, <clears throat> it takes a little bit more work to make sure that this looks more like what I was looking for. And I'll show you my finished piece here. But this is more generally where I started for the actual extrusion. And we will see if my recording will allow me to bring up an example of what I did. It will not, but I will post this with the video uh, example of what I was able to create with this particular project. But as you can see here, this is just a quick rough and tumble of what you can do in Illustrator and bring it into Maya to quickly create some unique shapes. I hope you enjoyed taking a look. I will definitely cover booleans another time, but I do think the extrusions along the curve in Illustrator is a great place to start. Uh, until the next time with Maya with Matthew, thank you all. Take it easy.